The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's um, AHD Be Smart Hawk webinar titled Using Lean Techniques to Improve Labour Efficiency in Horticulture. My name is Grace Emony and I'm a Senior Knowledge Exchange Manager at AHDB and I'm responsible for leading the Smart Hawk programme. Um, for those of you who don't know, Smart Hawk was launched by AHDB in response to labour shortages um, and it focuses on both labour efficiency and on automation, robotics and technology. Um, before we launch into the sort of technical detail of today's webinar, um, if I could please just um, go through a couple of housekeeping points with you. Um, so firstly, all attendees are muted um, and will remain that way throughout. You can still ask questions and I'll explain how to do that in a couple of minutes on the next slide. Um, the webinar today, we've scheduled it in for an hour and I'll be doing my best to keep it as close to that time as possible. Um, we will be taking questions at the end, so if we do run out of time, um, then I'll make sure that I make a note of any extra questions and pass it over to our speakers and get those back to you as soon as possible. Just to let you know as well that today's webinar, we are recording it um, and it will be made available afterwards for you to watch again. My contact details are at the bottom of the slide here. So if you do have any questions about anything that arises after this presentation, then please do let me know and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So for those of you that haven't joined an AHDB webinar before, um, can I just talk you through quickly how we can ask questions? So you should all see a similar panel to this on the right hand side of your screen. Um, if you go down to the gray bar under questions, you can drop down and literally just type a question in there, which will be visible to myself um, who, and I'll be able to ask the presenters. Um, as I said, we are gonna be taking questions at the end, but if you type questions in as we go through, um, we'll just make sure that we don't forget anything um, and I'll make sure that they're collated and we can ask them at the end. Um, there is also a basis handout um, where you can um, pop your details and email details to me and we'll make sure that they are collated as well. Um, so I'd just like to introduce our speakers for this afternoon. So we've got Neil Fedden and David Crowfoot. Both Neil and David are from Fedden USP and they've been heavily involved in the work that we've been doing with Smart Hort so far. Uh, Neil's going to be leading the presentation today. Um, but David is going to be available for questions at the end and I'll be sharing the questions between them. So without further ado, if I could please pass over to Neil. Hi, it's great to see. Yeah, so today, uh, welcome all. Uh, today I'm going to give you a presentation on, on lean um, and techniques that we've been using to improve productivity. Uh, so these are techniques that we've used to support a smaller hole at one. Uh, which we'll give you plenty of examples of and then the hopefully um, encourage you to join the Smart Hort 2 program. Uh, so we'll talk through what's entailed within that program itself. So uh, a little bit of an intro to myself. Uh, my background is manufacturing and in particular uh, UK and Japanese automotive industry. Um, there we go. So that's where a lot of the techniques online come from. They come from the automotive industries um, so basically used to improve productivity uh, used to reduce down lead times the business uh, Fed and USP has been running for about 10 years now we work across a, a wide range of organizations um, we started off in manufacturing so we still do work with companies like Rolls-Royce cars and Siemens but more and more now we've been doing work with retailers or so people like John Lewis B&Q uh, the large independent garden centres, people like Webbs and Bents. And we've done work with about 140 horticultural and agricultural companies uh, during this time period as well. So we've been going for about 14 years now. And I think the majority of companies we work with, it's, they're all looking for, for similar sort of outcomes, which is how do we get the best out of the people we've got within the business? How do we improve productivity? How can we reduce down lead times? Uh, how can we improve customer service levels? So uh, this lean manufacturing uh, business improvement techniques um, have spread now across a whole wide range of industries 
um, and people now started to use them in office environments as well. So it's uh, it, it's grown a little bit in in its application. And uh, what we'll talk you through today with the uh, the work that we did as part of Smart Hope One, which was funded by HDB, we'll talk you through some specific examples of how it applies to horticulture and agriculture. So that's just a, a summary of some of the programs that we've been involved with with HDB. So uh, as I said, it's uh, we started off ornamental, spread out into wider horticulture, so soft fruit, uh, and since then we've been doing work with uh, beef and dairy farms and pig producers as well. So it's uh, so for over the last two year period, it started to spread in terms of its application. Course objectives. Uh, what we're trying to give you as part of the course is some tactical support to improve productivity. So a lot of the techniques that we use uh, don't involve a lot of investment to generate generate savings. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you things that you can use almost immediately. They're going to give you quick payback, and it's uh, it's been focused on recently um, as, as a way of improving the amount of capacity and getting the best out of the people. As I mentioned earlier, I think everyone struggled with recruiting the right resources into the industry. So how do we get the best out of the people that we have got? Uh, so we've really focused around improving productivity um, to, to free up capacity so you can get more out the door with the same amount of people within the business. And uh, so that's the, the main focus, what we're trying to do is, is give you some hands-on improvement. So we'll, we'll guide you through the techniques. Uh, we'll give you plenty of case studies. Uh, and then what we'll do is actually show you how you can actually use these within your own business. So we'll, we'll take you through the core structures we go through this presentation, but we'll, uh, we'll show you how it's not just about the theory, more and more it's about the actual practical application itself of the theory and how, can it, how it can be used to generate and improve the amount of savings within the business. Okay, so Lean, um, this is the, the, the basics uh, and the basis of what Lean's all about, it essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to amount, uh, eliminate the amount of non-value add within the operation. So if you look down on this left-hand side here, uh, you've got what we call Tim Woods, uh, which are the eight typical ways that you find within an operation. Uh, this might be transporting materials, for example, where you're moving materials around the uh, around the farm, around the, uh, the growing area itself, and the amount of time lost in doing so. So inventory could be where you've got too much stock, um, stock of the actual product itself or stock of packing materials and, and packaging, which is causing problems. Um, if you've got a pack house that's quite constrained for, for space and you've got a lot of pack materials in there, then having too much inventory can cause issues. So what we're trying to do is identify as much of this waste as we possibly can do with the idea of reducing it down so we can free up more and more capacity to do what we classify as value adding operations. So these are things that basically you can charge and add value to the customer. So you basically improve your profits of the organization itself. So that's where the term link comes from. It comes from looking at what we can do to reduce down this amount of non-value add to improve the percentage and capacity for more value add within the business itself. So just carrying on down this list, we talked about transport, we talked about inventory. You've got movements of people where people are walking around, looking at uh, issues around where people are walking around the operation, trying to find the tools, the equipment, uh, trying to find the product um, to actually do the picking operation itself. So looking at where we can reduce that down. Um, where you've got weight and delays. So in, in some businesses we've walked into, uh, there's been issues whereby they've been waiting for pick lists to be generated. So they've been waiting for the offices to, to generate the, uh, the list of items to be picked for the, for the pack house. Uh, it could be waiting and delays associated with getting the transport transportation equipment. So we're waiting for forklifts and delays associated with that. Overproduction could be simply producing more than what's required or a giveaway uh, within the product itself. So packing more than what's required to the, uh, to the customer specification. Overprocessing might be going over and above the specification itself. So grading out too much product or uh, essentially putting more, too many activities in and going over and above the specification that's required by the end customer. Defects is where well, you're not meeting the specification of the customer and therefore you've got to carry out some form of rework activity. 
So that might be a repackaging activity or producing more labels. Um, so it's looking at all those kind of issues. And the view is if we can reduce and eliminate these down as much as possible, then we're going to free up more time to utilize the skills and the talent within the operation itself. So this is why I think a lot of people are now stuck in, starting to look at lean, especially with the, the problems of getting the right skills into the business. I think people are starting to realize that if we can reduce down the amount of time spent on these non-value added activities, that's going to free up more time for the people that have got the skills and the talent in the business to do the value added side of the, the, uh, the business itself and the operations. So that's a bit of an overview of lean and where lean gets its name from. This is uh, the tools and techniques that we cover as part of the course. So these are the, the five basic principles that you have uh, within Lean. So uh, first of all, we understand what is it the customer is willing to pay for? What are the activities that increase the value of the product itself? And then once we understand what adds value, we can then start to define what doesn't add value within the process. Value stream, uh, we use techniques like process mapping. Uh, to walk through the whole process, understanding all the different steps within the business itself that take the inputs um, and then convert them into an output that's saleable to the customer. So that's where we understand the, the process. And, we, and as part of understanding the process, we start to identify where there's issues within the, uh, within the process itself. The idea of flow, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that value to move as quickly as possible through the operation. So how do we get in the inputs? How do we convert them as quick as possible? And how do we get the output to the customer uh, as quick as possible? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate that waste. That waste can typically cause delays and blockages within the value streams, which uh, stop the flow of product. So by eliminating the waste, what we're always trying to do is uh, how do we improve the flow of the product through the operation itself? Pull is all about sequencing. So this is all about uh, commonly known in, uh, in, in lean terms, just in time. So this is all about understanding when does the customer want the products and sequencing the operation. So you deliver to the customer at the right time, uh, exactly when they need that, that product, so not too late and not too early. So understanding the sequencing of the operations. And then the, the final principle of lean is this idea of perfection, a continuous improvement. And it's uh, essentially getting everybody involved within the business to identify the problems, understand the issues, and looking at what can be done to eliminate that non-value added or eight waste that we talked about earlier. So uh, the key thing behind Lean is, is training as many people as possible. It's involving as many people as possible within the business and getting everybody to challenge and look at the operation and think, you know, is there a better way of doing this? Uh, so rather than having the same problems keep reoccurring over and over again, uh, what we're trying to do as part of the program is give people the skills to step back from the day-to-day -day activities and just think about you know challenge the way things are done and say look is there a better way we can do this that will uh, reduce down non-value added wasting time and therefore improve productivity so that's the the key ethos behind lean is is identifying this waste training people up so they can challenge the day-to-day the -day. And, and quite often what you find we in businesses and you'll see it when i'll take through the case studies in a minute you'll start to see it. I think everyone's guilty of the fact that when you're actually in the operation itself, you're so focused on the task and you're so focused on getting the daily requirements out that's required for your customers. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to step back and just challenge the way things are done. You're so focused on getting the product out. So what this allows people to do, it just gives them a little bit of space just to simply step out of the process itself and, uh, and analyze it and just think as a group, think about where things can be done to actually improve the operation so that's the uh, what you've got around the outside uh, some of the tools and techniques that we use uh, in order to deliver these five principles within lean typical projects and uh, i'll not take you through every single one of these but these are just some of the typical projects that we've done within horticulture and agriculture uh, I could be looking at uh, machine setup times in a pack house. How do you do changeovers um, on different products or different labels, for example, or different pack types? More and more companies these days are increasing the amount of variety that they've got within the business. Uh, if you're a business that's lucky enough to have only one or two 
variants, uh, then it's it's much it's a much simpler business uh, and it's a much easier problem to fix. But if you're a, a typical business within the UK and you've got a very wide range of product that's going through the pack house, then inevitably you've got to do more change orders. Uh, so looking at the setup times and stepping back and challenging how long does it take, what can we do to reduce down the amount of time it takes to actually set up a machine and the amount of downtime that we've got associated with that machine, it can be crucial to improving productivity. Reducing down lead time, um, trend has been customers becoming more and more impatient. So not, not only has there been a, uh, an exponential growth in the amount of variety within a business, what we're also seeing as well is customers becoming more and more impatient. So that lead time from when the pick list is generated or the lift list through to getting that product through to dispatch and then ready for shipment to the customer comes absolutely crucial as well. And uh, there's certainly been a trend where uh, later and later in the day, customers have been changing their mind and the ability for a business to react to those late changes is something that can differentiate a business and can be used to help win new future sales. So uh, looking at that lead time, mapping out the process, thinking about what, what can we do to eliminate waste? How can we compress those lead times is, is a typical project that we look at. Most horticultural agricultural business, exceptionally seasonal. So you may have uh, the majority of the sales generated within a two month period. Uh, so crucial to operations and productivity is how do you bring in people to the business? How do you train them up quickly? How do you make sure that they're, they're working at speed as quickly as possible? So quite a lot of the focus of some of the case studies has been how do we ramp up the operations when we're coming into, into peak? And then once we've got through peak, how do we ramp down the operations efficiently as well? And that can be the difference. The ability to ramp up and ramp down around the, the seasonal spike becomes crucial, again, to productivity and profitability. Most businesses uh, are becoming more complex. So a key thing is communications. How do we communicate more complex messages around the business? So use of things like visual management boards to make sure people know what the work needs to be done, what work needs to get out, uh, to make sure we've got efficient feedback loops. So if we've got uh, people picking um, and products, qualities being poor quality products being found in the pack house, how do we feed that information back as quickly as efficiently so that the pickers can adjust what they're doing and correct any inefficiencies that are actually introduced into the process. So use of visual management boards is crucial for improving the way things uh, and items and information is communicated around the business. So quite a lot of focus of, of the course is, is on how do we make things as visual as possible. Uh, particularly when you've got people that are joining the business who uh, might not necessarily speak English as an actual language, so how do we involve those people? How do we integrate them into the business quickly? And how do we give them the information that they need to be able to make sure they can do the job as effectively as possible? And then going down to the bottom, skill shortages. Um, so I mentioned earlier, I think the big challenge that everyone's been uh, coming across recently is uh, the skill shortages within operations. So if we can max reduce down the amount of non-value add, then we can maximise the capacity of uh, the people that we've got within the operation and hopefully compensate for the uh, inability at times to bring in the right skills into the operation itself. So that's uh, just going into a little bit more detail of, uh, of the typical types of projects. These are the uh, the projects that we did as part of Smart Hort One. Uh, so this was funded by HD, HDB. Uh, we run it with uh, three strategic farms. And then we what we were trying to do is create a live case study. So we didn't want to just give people the theory of what lean was. We wanted to actually show them what lean meant uh, to be implemented and how it feel felt to uh, to implement lean within an operation. So uh, these are just some of the uh, the savings that we've uh, we've had back from those participating companies. Uh, we had attendees that came along to the farms and uh, were involved in the operations and involved in the uh, the presentations that we did um, and involved in actually implementing lean. And then we asked them to go back to their own businesses and actually start implementation of lean within their own businesses. So this, the program that we're, we're hopefully running with you guys, it builds along a lot of the experiences and a lot of the case studies that we received from this initial group. And uh, this is just uh, details of the of the savings that were achieved. Uh, these are all predicted yearly savings. Um, 
we were just about to go back and actually start confirming these savings with a lot of the businesses, but unfortunately we, we COVID, uh, we didn't quite get to uh, close the loop. Although we have spoke to a lot of these companies uh, over the phone and via Zoom calls, and we have confirmed that a lot of these savings were actually delivered within their own operations. As I mentioned earlier about uh, tactical improvements, um, you know, a lot of the savings that we focus in on, we're trying to uh, make sure that they're, they're not very expensive projects. Uh, we prioritise all the projects based off how much benefit does it deliver to the business and how much will it cost to implement these ideas. And what we're, uh, we're trying to focus in on are the ones that generate the, uh, the, the biggest savings with the le least amount of input costs into those particular projects. So I mentioned generating a live case study. This is part of Smart Hope 1 and what we want to deliver with you guys. It's, it's very much a combination of the, uh, the theory and the practical. So it's not just a uh, case of telling you how to do it. It's a, quick, a question of actually showing you and then giving you guys the experience. And then hopefully through that experience comes confidence uh, to actually carry on doing the implementation. So once the course finishes, uh, our objective is to get you to the point where you've got the confidence to carry out these techniques yourself within your own business uh, so you can keep it going. Um, and a key element of lean which does differentiate it from some other techniques that uh, look at focused on improving productivity. We're, we're very mindful of the fact that you've got to make the job easier for the individual. Uh, if all you do is uh, improve productivity, but you make the individual's job more difficult, then you're not going to sustain those improvements. So a lot of what we're trying to do, and again, you'll see it from the case studies in, in the next few slides, is how do we make the individual's job easier as well as delivering a business benefit? And that way you, you get sustainable improvements. It means you, it's more likely that people will carry on working this way and not just when there's somebody behind them managing. So these are a few case studies from, uh, from the initial group that we work with. So this one was focusing on a packing operation. Uh, and what we were looking at is the amount of time spent walking around the, the final packing operation from the, the packing operators. And what we could see when we were doing the analysis, when we were doing the process mapping, uh, you could see that a lot of time was spent walking backwards and forwards, trying to find the products, taking the product to the packing benches, uh, finding the packing materials, bringing the packing materials to the, to the packing benches. So there was a, a lot of uh, time associated with that. Uh, so we focused a lot of our activities on what we, could we do to improve the layout, to shorten these distances down. Uh, and it might only be shortening the, shorten the distances travelled by the operators down by one or two metres, but because of the frequency of which they're carrying out these particular operations, even if it's a small percentage of, of distance that's, uh, that's reduced through the new improved layout, it actually makes quite a big difference in terms of productivity. So you can see from this one, they actually achieved a 9% productivity improvement across the whole business uh, by simply looking at the, the layout of the packing operations and looking at what they could do to streamline it to reduce down the amount of movement of the packing operators themselves. And uh, what we've got in, highlighted in blue here is some of the techniques that we use that we're going to cover across as part of the course. So we use something called uh, string diagrams, whereby we simply get a layout of the operation and we mark on, mark on a string which shows the route that the packing operator is taking as part of the, the activity itself. And you can simply see by the amount of lines on the, the drawn layout, you can actually see where the majority of the walk is taking place. And that gives you some clues and some indications as what can be done to change the layout to reduce down that, that amount of walking around the operation itself. I mentioned earlier about process mapping and waste walks. This is where we're actually walking through the process. So we, we physically walk through the process with uh, key people from that work within the process on a day-to-day -day basis so that we're, we're showing the techniques of how to analyze a process but we're getting all their input and their intelligence as to what the issues are within the process what are the things that cause small delays minor stoppages mm. cause quality issues uh, cause these eight ways that we talked about earlier and, and as we're actually doing the process map we're populating the process map with all these issues which we then use to prioritize and help us identify uh, where the key focus is going to be for the improvement activities themselves. Uh, we use a technique called workplace organisation or 
quite often uh, it's called 5S within lean. Um, particularly useful if you've got very tight packing areas, uh, you haven't got a great deal of space within certain operations. It's a really good way of maximising the, the utilisation of space uh, within operations. So we'll, uh, we'll show you how you can use workplace organisation. Essentially what it is, is a place for everything and everything in its place is, is the best way of describing it. Uh, so making sure that people have got the uh, the tool and the equipment, the materials, the labels, everything to hand around the uh, their operation benches to uh, to minimise the amount of distance travelled, but also to minimise the amount of space that's consumed by that operation as well. So the big one from that is that obviously that nine percent labour saving uh, across quite a large operation. So that was quite uh, significant improvements that we saw that actually transferred itself. Uh, through to profits on the bottom line. And uh, that's just some screenshots that we took from the uh, the security cameras. So this was the before. You can't quite see it. It's not a great angle, but it, uh, it was very chaotic, the layout. Um, there's not a great deal of product coming through when this, this photograph's been taken either. So uh, it really doesn't illustrate and do justice the amount of travelling that was spent walking backwards and forwards to get the products and to get the actual packing material itself. And uh, what we looked at doing, and we relayed out to reduce down the amount of distance travelled for the the operators to get the packing material that they need, and then get the product to the benches ready for it to, to go down to the bottom onto the uh, the final pallets ready for shipment. And the same on the pick, we created a pick face uh, to reduce down the amount of distance travelled walking backwards and forwards to identify and uh, select the products ready for packing. Case study two is uh, from an ornamental grower. So this is all uh, a sticking operation. So basically taking cuttings from a fridge uh, and sticking them into trays ready to be grown on. Um, again, big issue around this was distance travelled. So uh, we did a cost benefit analysis. Previously, somebody had come up with a suggestion to, to buy a, a mobile fridge. There's a lot of distance and time associated with walking down to a main fridge at one end of the nursery collecting the cuttings and bringing them down to the operators that were doing the sticking itself. Um, previously management had uh, discounted that idea, uh, but when we actually started to do the waste walks and do the string diagrams and actually quantify how much time was associated around that, uh, it was quite easy to, to justify the expenditure of a, of a mobile fridge um, to actually save the amount of money and the amount of labour that was involved. And, and the other thing that came out of this as well was that labour um, that was that was reduced by reducing down the amount of distance travelled, the uh, the it created extra capacity for the supervisors, and that enabled the supervisors to spend more time training the operators. So, uh, and I guess you've probably all witnessed this within your own businesses, uh, especially when you get a new group of operators coming in that are doing fairly repetitive work. Uh, you get some big disparities and differences in pick rates. Uh, and operating speeds. So what we used the extra time created by getting this fridge in place was to give more time to the supervisors so they could spend more time coaching the individuals and lifting the productivity speeds of those individuals uh, that had just come into the business. Uh, and a lot of it was revolved around the ergonomics of how they organised themselves around the sticking operation itself. So tools and techniques that we covered, uh, which were part of the course, so how do you do cost-benefit analysis? We talk about uh, continuous improvement. So how do you do trials to verify the ideas that you've got? So uh, rather than just taking an idea and implementing it across the whole business, how do we set up a trial? Uh, we call them plan, do, check, act. So you can simulate what the, uh, the idea is, prove that it works before you start uh, investing into any capital equipment. So in this example, a fridge. So we, we actually simulated uh, what was involved in, in having this fridge close by uh, to actually prove uh, that it was going to actually save time uh, and therefore justify the expenditure. So uh, we talk a lot about how do you set up trials, how do you prove out your ideas uh, to support the, the investments. We, I'll show you in a minute, we, we took videos uh, of the operators and then we converted those videos into training aids. So when new people came into the business, we could uh, we had videos of uh, the quickest stickers uh, and we could uh, show those to the new starters and we could show them the, the subtleties of the difference in the hand movements, how they actually set up a bench, how they organised themselves 
therefore we can improve the rate at which we can get these individuals to the, uh, the quickest productivity rates as possible. And the technique we use is one called uh, video activity sampling. So we, we actually video two operators or a group of operators. And then what we do is we actually place those videos next to each other on a screen and then actually watch them back in slow motion. So you can actually compare the hand movements and the way they organize themselves. So you can actually start to identify uh, why one picker is quicker uh, than another picker. And this is a screenshot from that type of analysis. Uh, so what you can see on, on the screen is you've got four pickers and then we've got a number count where we can actually compare the speed of those individuals. And you can see some quite big, I think this was over about a 10 minute period, this video, uh, and you can see there's some quite big differences in the, uh, the rates that they're achieving. But then the ability to actually really finely analyse the ergonomics of those hand movements and think about why one picker is, is quicker than another picker and then sit down with the slower pickers and then share these videos with them to actually use it to train them and to help them improve their rates. Uh, that's where the, the benefits come from. And, and all, always what we're trying to do is to shift up the, the percentage quartiles across a range of pickers. So uh, how can we shift up the lower quartile so they become more like the, the medium and the upper quartile improvement pickers? And a lot of it in this one, uh, when we started to analyse it, a lot of it was where they organised themselves. So a lot of it was uh, the quicker pickers. We found that they, uh, they had the cuttings closer to the trays. Uh, they held cuttings in their hand. So therefore, they were reducing down the amount of hand movements and the amount of time they were actually picking stock up from the actual bags itself. So it was, it was relatively simple things that was easy to transfer those skills across to other operators. This one is a, a 5S one or a workplace organisation. Uh, and I guess uh, most of you can relate to the amount of time spent, uh, which might appear trivial, but uh, it's amazing again how it, how it amounts up when you look at the, uh, the frequency of these type of things happen where people are walking around trying to find cleaning materials, for example, they're trying to find secretaries, they're trying to find packaging materials, they're trying to find the right labels. Uh, and when you when you actually analyse it and you look at the amount of times it happens and then you multiply up those those five minutes lost by the, uh, the frequency that they occur a week and then the number of times in the year that they're occurring and then the number of times that uh, individuals are, are carrying out these operations, then it seems to mount up quite quickly. So um, a lot of what we're doing with workplace organisation, I mentioned earlier about it's a place for everything, everything in its place. So how can we set up simple shadow boards so that people can find these, this equipment as quickly and as efficiently as possible to reduce down any losses? So techniques we use, very simple problem resolution, getting people to identify and list out uh, the issues that they have on a day-to-day -day basis and then think about what can we do to make sure those problems never reoccur again. So rather than having the same problem happening every week, you know, what actions can we do to make sure this problem never comes back again? Mentioned about workplace organisation and uh, making sure that the setup is right. And then once you've got the setup the way it should be, how do you keep it that way? So uh, one of the techniques that we'll, uh, we'll cover as part of the course is a thing called five S audits, where we, uh, we get people to think about analysing and looking at their operations and making sure these disciplines are maintained uh, throughout the year. Just another simple picture. Uh, this isn't a before and after, it's two separate companies. This one's from a farm. Uh, this one is from, from a manufacturing environment. Uh, but you can see the problem on the left-hand side. Uh, people come to do maintenance on a piece of equipment, uh, trying to find the tool and the equipment that they need. Uh, chances are, we have quite a few examples from this one on the left where they've picked up cables and the cables are damaged and therefore not fit for use. Uh, and therefore had to be rewired, causing, uh, again, stoppages and downtime on getting that equipment back up and running again and, and this is uh, an ideal shadow board where you've got this this concept of the place for everything and everything in its place so you're reducing down the amount of time spent by individuals mm. trying to find the equipment that they need to uh, to do the things that they've got to do this one again it's another picking operation uh, this one was where we identified the amount of time spent walking from the pick face of soft fruit through to the actual weight scales and uh, time spent queuing 
to, to get access to the way scales. Uh, so what we did as part of this one, process mapping and waste walks again. And uh, what were the, the answer that came out of this was to move the way stations close to the pit face itself. Uh, that did mean that we had to lose a little bit of growing space and we had to cut out some of the uh, some of the, the the plants and the growing area and give up some of the growing area for the for the fruit itself. But when we looked at the cost benefit, the savings that we got in terms of productivity uh, far outweighed any loss in in growing space. Uh, and because productivity seemed to be the uh, the crucial thing at the time and seemed to be the biggest issue within the business, then we we took a business decision to do that. Uh, and essentially, it worked out down at the bottom. You can see 20 minutes per picker per day. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, that small marginal gain, when you then start to multiply that up by 200 people, actually starts to mount up to being quite a large saving per year. So uh, that's one of the activities that we did. We also introduced runners. So we had people that were dedicated to making sure that the pickers had everything they needed to carry out the picking operation themselves. Common one, uh, this is looking at the amount of value add and non value add in an operation. And a common comment we always get is that wouldn't it be great if we could get the slower pickers to pick faster? And uh, when we've actually carried out the analysis, uh, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. What we actually found is it wasn't the fact that the quicker pickers are picking any quicker, it's simply down to the fact that they organize themselves more. Uh, and therefore, by organizing themselves more, they've got 15% more pick time. So it's not necessarily that they're picking quicker, it's just that they're picking for a 15% longer every day because they better organize themselves and they've got the products around them and they've got the punnets and they've got access to the way scales. They've got everything around them that they need to enable them to actually pick for longer periods where some of those slower pickers, you could actually observe that they have more downtime and more walking time associated uh, with their operation. So looking at those kind of things and thinking about what we can do uh, to re improve the organization of those people that aren't necessarily achieving the pick rates that you'd expect to see out of that operation. And then final case study, this one was really looking at uh, the amount of time and the amount of losses associated with grading. And uh, what we found is they were at the pick phase, they were grading too much out. So they were grading more out than what was required. They were going over and above the specification uh, required by the pack house and by the end customer. So simple communication. Um, we set up, it's put in place more communication between the pickers and the, uh, the packers, particularly around quality and understanding what the right grading quality was uh, and looking at what actions could be done to correct that. Uh, and their aim is to reduce down or improve uh, picking costs by 7%. By, uh, by reducing down the amount of heavy grading that they have within the operation. And this is where we use techniques such as structured problem solving to help identify uh, ways of uh, reducing down these particular issues. Visual management boards. So I mentioned earlier about how do we communicate. So using boards to communicate complex messages around the business uh, very effectively. So these are just, again, some of the techniques that we use as part of the course. So these might have on there, you know, what's expected to get out this day, what pick rates have been achieved, uh, what are the problems that have been encountered, uh, what crop maintenance is going on that could impact on, on daily operations. So we're using these boards as almost like a dashboard for everything that's going on within an operation to make sure those messages are communicated effectively as possible to the people that need to know that information. And making sure that we have a quick 15 minute stand up in this particular business where that information is communicated out on a daily basis to make sure everyone understands what it is that they've got to do. So just a reminder, the course um, that we're hopefully doing with you guys and hopefully this has, has come out of the presentation itself. So we're, we're trying to make it as practical as possible. Uh, we want to make it focused on short term gains. Uh, so how do you improve productivity within a, within a short time scale, uh, hopefully within the season that you're actually running with? And then how do you actually translate that to running improvements within your own business? So it's a theory, practical, and then showing you how you can actually use it within your own business itself. 
And this is where we've set the course up, really. We've set it up so it's split down into modules. The modules will be delivered, the fee will be delivered over a Zoom call or an MS Teams call. Um, what we'll do then is we, uh, we will set you activities, we'll give you how-to guides, uh, give you uh, examples of how to go away and actually trial this within your own business. And then what we'll do then is, is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll spend a part of the next module just reviewing to see how you've gone on. We implemented those ideas. So uh, it's a question of giving you a bit of theory, setting you off to do a, a practical activity within your own business and run a little mini project within your own business and then giving us feedback as to how you've gone on and then we can help you if you've had any problems encountering implementing these ideas. And the plan is to make all these resources available to you on the uh, on HDB websites. So that way, if you, if you do miss a session, uh, that way you can catch back up and you can use this as, as reference material as well. And then final slide, this is the modules. We broke it down into two hour chunks and then spread that out over a time period. Uh, so that way, hopefully it's manageable chunks. It's, it's delivered remotely. So it's hopefully easier for you, for you guys to attend uh, and it's broken down in such a way that you can you can digest it easily and then actually take it back into your own business and actually start applying it. So hopefully that's that's covered everything, but uh, more than happy to uh, to go through any questions that may have come out as part of the uh, of the presentation. If I can just jump back in at this point and just give you all a little bit more information about kind of practically if what we've covered so far in the webinar has been of interest to you and you are keen to get involved in these online modules um, just to give you some information about how you can get involved so there is a lot more information on the AHDB website at this address here we've listed it into we've broken it down to some Q&A sort of sections to try and make it as easy as possible and to give as much information as we can um, as per on Neil's previous slide all of the dates and times are listed um, so that you can see see kind of the frequency and how they're broken down um, because the places are limited because because it's quite an interactive session, we do need to limit the number of numbers that can take part in the interactive element. So on those Teams calls, um, we do ask that you're able to commit to all sessions. I mean, realistically, we know that people aren't gonna have to miss one or two for various reasons, um, but that we do ask that on the whole, that you would be able to commit to the majority. As Neil said, if you can't make a certain one, then you will be able to catch up. Um, for people that, can't commit to some of the sessions or the majority of the sessions we are going to be making sure that the presentations from each of the module presentations are uploaded onto the smart hawk web pages um, and we'll put some any kind of templates or anything we'll make sure that they're uploaded alongside it um, as long with some kind of summary text explaining what was covered in that session so won't be part of the kind of like the interactive feedback sessions but you will still be able to access the theory of what we've been covered as well um, finally and importantly if you do want to register your place please email me um, on the address provided um, we are limiting it to two people per business um, at this stage just to make it fair um, and to make sure that as many people can have access to it as possible um, we have had we've already had some bookings for it so if you are interested um, I would encourage you to email me as soon as possible and I can make sure that we've got places reserved for you um, so I think it is time to move on to any questions so if you've typed questions in as we've gone along I will be able to um, ask those to presenters now if you've got any questions that we haven't um, that you haven't popped in yet feel free again to just pop them in that question box um, in the in the panel on the right hand side um, and we'll go through some now um, so one of the, we've had this question a couple of times actually um, what are the kind of the biggest or the most common challenges um, that businesses experience when they try to implement lean? Don't know, Neil or David, which one of you wants to take that one? Shall I start, Neil? Yeah, give yeah, me a chance. So, to... Yeah, give me a chance to catch up. So I think um, 
some of the common common challenges are is you know there is time to do these things and i think you know you, being honest about it finding some of that time it sometimes can be a challenge so i think it's about planning that time in um i think you know there's time taken also to engage with other people in the business um, i think those are our common challenges i think one of the other things we find is actually selecting the right project is is one of the things if if you know the selection of the project of either going for something potentially too large or as neil pointed out in his presentation some of those things that really affect the people doing the work are the things that are that usually benefits most and usually the things that sustained so i think those types of things are, are key often key challenges i think also sometimes um our desire to be perfect sometimes gets in the way of actually making some progress so um, Neil and I are very keen on testing and trying things. So I think a lot during the, the Smart Hawk program, we were encouraging the participants to, to try things, even though it might not be 100% correct. At least if we try things, we'll learn a lot more from that. So I think they're some of the common challenges that not particularly just to this sector, I think across the piece. Any others, Neil? Um, yeah, I think trying to get people to change the way they've done something they've been doing it the same way for like the last 15 20 years um so i mentioned earlier when we were doing the process mapping and the waste walks we we involve as many people as possible uh, when we're actually carrying out those activities so we're we're getting them to tell us about all the issues that they have and we're involving them uh, within that activity and then we're getting them to come back with lots of suggestions on what could be done to actually improve that operation so by involving them within the data analysis um, and coming up with the suggestions and the ideas and hopefully that breaks that cycle of, of those particular individuals just keep pushing back and not listening to new ideas uh, and getting them involved so that they almost take a little bit of ownership for those ideas as well so that can sometimes be a challenge is getting people to change the way they do things if they've been doing it the same way for a number of years lovely thank you um next question we've had through um who would be the best person from within the organization to attend the course and if there's two people attending um i guess who the best two people would be what roles i'll go start again then shall i neil i think i think generally find the sort of the um you know operational people who are obviously partly responsible for the areas of work we're likely to see the changes in are clearly the people to get involved. I think supervisor, manager type levels are often the best, the best people to get involved because I think they have the connection to the people who do the work, which is obviously from what you've seen from what Neil's shown is where we focus our effort and time in terms of trying to understand. So I think it partly depends on where you think the opportunities lie, but I think it's in terms of sort of the level of the organisation, it would be normally around that supervisor manager level. Neil, again, anything to Yeah, add? I agree. I think it needs to be sort of like, you know, like I said, team leaders, supervisors, those are sort of like involved in the, in the focus of where you want to generate the improvements. Um, not to exclude other people, uh, we've had a couple of finance directors that have been involved before in the past and uh, business owners that wanted to get and understand more about the techniques so they could uh, they could almost be like the champions for the uh, for the lean activities in the future. So um, I won't just exclude it to those individuals. Um, if, if there's some senior managers that want to be involved as well, then by all means. And I think then it's about getting a mix, isn't it? I think that would be a very useful mix to kind of have some more senior people and some more and a, and a supervisor team leader if you wanted to take your your sort of two points on the two people on the course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we've had a question through that leads on quite nicely to this one. Then, um, does it have to be the same person from the business that attends each module? So I think there's a level of continuity that's required. It's it's the way the course is designed. It's it is a journey that the 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 you know we'll take them through the techniques and we'll take them through the sort of journey of analysing the current state of of you know looking for improvements of then thinking about implementing them. So I think it's preferential if there's some continuity um, across the whole course for that more than anything else. But again, I think. You know, being pragmatic, as Neil said before, you know, we understand that, you know, things change, etc. And I think if you had two people and there was some continuity across 
at least one of those people or across the you know just a few groups over the whole course life that would probably be okay i think yeah, and especially those two individuals sort of working together as well on improvement projects, so they can they can both support each other on if if, if they do miss a module, uh, they can support each other on what was missed. Uh, and I think making the resources available as well on the HDB website will help um, if you do miss the odd module. Um, the the way we're doing it, because we're trying to get to the point where we give away these techniques so people can carry on using them themselves, we're putting a big emphasis on writing how-to guides. So like breaking it down into step by step, how do you actually use these techniques within a business, which will hopefully help as well from a continuity point of view. Um, what are the questions have we had in? Um, so someone said, my biggest problem is getting enough skilled resource. Um, how exactly is that going? Is this going to help with that issue? So I think nearly partly covered this, isn't it? So I think it's about maximising the use of the resource that you have. So it's about ensuring that, you know, you're using your resource that you can get hold of in the most efficient way, which means hopefully in the longer term for the output that you achieve, you won't need as much resource rather than searching for more. So the, the purpose really of Lean is, is through efficiency. How can you really get more from what you currently have from a resource point of view? Yeah, and then and then the other one as well that's, that keeps coming up more and more is retention. So how do we retain the right skills? So once we've got we've attracted people in, uh, and we how do we train them up to speed as quick as possible? And then how do we retain them? So that element that I was talking about earlier, which is how do we make the job as easy as possible for the individuals as well as generating a business benefit? That's where that kicks in as well. It's uh, you know hopefully what we can do is we can take some of the hassle factor out the job as well for the individuals and therefore you've got more chance of retaining those individuals for future seasons. Thank you. Um, if you do have any other questions, can I just ask you to type them in to the box um, in the next couple of minutes, please? We've only got we've only got one question left. So if you do have uh, any other questions, then then now is the time to send it. Um, so the final one that I've got through um, is, would there be any support provided between the sessions? Yes, I think, you know, um, Neil and I will be available, I think, to, to, to take some calls and speak to individuals between the sessions. Um, and also, I think we'll encourage people to, to sort of pick up some share, some learning between them as well. I know, when we did Smart Hawk One, we had some fairly active groups in terms of sharing things that were happening or asking questions, et cetera. So I think it's it's both. There will be there'll be a level of our support that we'll be able to provide, but also you know, we'll encourage the group to to share and 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 talk to each other as well, which I think, as I say, during the first program, that was very successful as well. Yeah, I think we'll we'll share as much as we possibly can we'll set up an ms teams page for example and share as much as we possibly can on that um and then via email mobile phone um, or else the ms team pages if, if there's any specific supports that are required we can uh, we can provide it that way lovely thank you it's also worth flagging as well um that obviously any queries or anything that do come about um in either it, beforehand or in between these modules um by all means feel free to get in contact with myself directly as well um and i can make sure that that it's passed on to neil or david directly um to get an answer as well um so i don't have any other questions that have come through at the moment so if you do have any questions afterwards please just email them through to me um and i'll make sure that we get them answered um, if I can just quickly draw your attention to um, a couple of other things that hopefully will be of interest to you. So the Smart Hall website on the main AHDB pages, um, it contains a lot of information about what we did in the original Smart Hall Strategic Centres programme. Um, so there's some good content on there about the sort of things that were covered um, and um, some of the various techniques, methods and achievements from those centres. So I'd encourage you to have a look at that as well, um, as well as information about what we're doing in terms of the world of automation and robotics as well. Um, the AHDB YouTube 
the Horticulture YouTube channel has some really good training resources on there. So whether it's your health and safety or it's your champion, um, it's your best practice videos. Um, I would encourage you again to go and have a look at those um, and especially if you haven't used them before um, to look at what you might be able to use for your business um, for ready for next season to make sure that they could take part in your um, induction process. Um, and finally, hopefully you will all be aware of the work that is undertaken through the AHDB skills program but this is just a plug for that really um, the skills pages have a huge amount of information about um, various courses that the skills team run previous webinars um, be it leadership management training um, motivation business planning there's a huge amount of information on those pages which I would strongly encourage you to go and have a look at again any questions about anything um, that you see on any of those pages, please do let me know um, and I will get back to you um, with answers as soon as I can. So I think all that's left for today is to thank Neil and David for their input into this webinar. I really hope that you found it useful and I hope that um, it stoked a bit of enthusiasm for getting in, involved with the uh, Smart Hawk modules that we're gonna be running. Um, please do go to the website to have a look for more detail on the courses. Um, again, the recording is going to be made available of this webinar so that you can watch it back if you want to. Um, and please look out for future AHDB horticulture webinars. We've got quite a lot coming up over the next couple of months. Um, so hopefully there will be other ones of interest to you there. So thank you very much for attending today and I'll hopefully see you on another webinar soon.